fact is, that's our MO. When our kids walk around the hall, they don't, when they play catch, they're not playing catch like this or playing catch like this. And we're not at that point yet at NT. We're getting back to that point. Um, but that's what they do. All right? Our quarterbacks, they're motivated to play quarterback because they're usually our leading rusher. When you tell a kid he's going to be a fullback nowadays, it's like, uh, you know, the info thing is to be Gronkowski and be like a flex tight end. Thing. But in our offense, the kids learn real quick that if you're the fullback, you're the man. Right? Now, when we run triple, it's, it's, it's not real simple. I shouldn't say that. It takes a lot of laps. If you're going to do it, um, out of gone, it's not too bad. It's actually, like I said, the quarterbacks like it a little bit better. But basically, we're reading the first two guys head up or outside of the tackle. We have different calls based on um, where you're lined up, whether we're running inside veer or outside veer, or if we're going to run load, etc. So spread teams that have these guys all over the place, this is a pretty good deal. Because if you look at it over here based on how they're set up, and I don't care what defense they're in, and you can leave two people alone, that's a win, as long as you can execute it, all right? Everybody on the back side is scooping to the play and cutting, usually, all right? Cutting people, and I know, you know, we're not cutting people, we're not high lowing people, we're cutting people right off the bat. Some people don't like that. It is what it is. It's perfectly legal. I haven't seen one kid in 23 years get a knee injury because we cut him. Okay, right off the line of scrimmage. Right? So anyways, we're leaving the first two guys head up or outside the tackle alone. So a lot of times the tackle will make a call based on that, like telling the quarterback what's going on. Like I said, everybody, the, the MO on us is don't play, play them early in the season before they got stuff figured out. That's the MO. Because once we get stuff figured out, it's like cheating. All right? We're leaving these two alone so the receiver you know, this is our right slot. We'd be in here if we're in flex bone, and that's our split end, we call them, whatever. They know who they have to leave alone, so they're going to the next guys. All right? So nothing changes. Even though we're in spread, this kid would usually be here. He knows, hey, i got to be the pitch man. We're going to the right. i got to be that guy. <laughs> that's pitching. So i got to get into that phase by the time the ball is snapped. So, that's what he's going to do. And then again, the quarterback is reading for the dive on the red kid and the pitch on the blue one. All right? And uh, quarterbacks tend to like it more, like I said, out of this. And I'll show you some clips back in the old days. So this would be our twins right divide, our twins left divide, we call it. All that does is send the left slot out here and bring the right slot back here. So it's same as, same as for the rules. Nothing changes. Everybody knows what's going on. Okay? Here's our fullback, here's our pitch. I don't know how they're going to sort this out. I don't remember. This kid's inside a little bit. The tackler usually makes a call based on what he thinks he wants to do with that kid. And again, that's giving ownership to him. So there he goes. He probably made a towel call, which means, hey, I'm going to tackle. I'm going to hook the end. I'm going to hook number one. And then the quarterback's like, wow, that's a good deal, because now I don't have to read him, and I'm outside pitching off of number two. Usually the quarterback's got the ball in his hands on this particular play. Yeah, is that the norm if you get like a head up? What's that? Is that the norm if you get a head up, you're going to block that guy? If we get. Um, Get a kid. The problem with running triple veer against the team that if I have a guy right here that's super tight and he 
he's a read on the tackle, and he's squeezing the hell out of me. He's bumping me off, and I'm not getting to that backer, and then that backer comes over the top. That's like a standard issue <coughs> stunt against that. If we get to that point, the tackle will come over and tell me, I can reach that kid, and then we send the fullback through B-gap for that middle linebacker that he was supposed to get. So he makes that call. If he's not comfortable, or he's just, I'm way better than that kid, let's get to the outside perimeter right now um, by making that call, that he can do it. That's what I mean about giving the kids ownership. I have no problem with an offensive tackle making a call at the line of scrimmage that puts us in a better situation. Hey, just made me look smart. You know, good for you, great. And you know what they're doing when they're doing it, they, they are so bought in at that point, they're like, hey, you know, going home telling mommy. I, I made that check on that play. That's a good deal, right? So when you can get to that point, it's good stuff. All right, so let's look at a couple of them here. I don't know if this is the same one. Okay, here we go. All right, this is a little different animal. This is not triple. This is our double pitch thing that we do. We screwed up. This kid is a tenth grader. He's supposed to go to the same. We're supposed to pitch off the corner the second time. Fancy. All right, here you can see triple, good triple. We're out of like a dub set. Here comes the left slot. Hey, I got to get into a pitch relationship. Here's our two reads. One and two. He knows I got to get to him. He knows I got to get to the ghost man that's off the screen. Tackle's got to veer into this kid. He's a good player. So is our tackle. You can see the defensive ends, they, they can't help themselves. I don't think when you're, when you're in gun, it's ridden so long that they're like, oh, I got to take that kid. There's our pitch kid out here. He's on an island now. He doesn't want to make a decision and the quarterback makes it for him. Same deal, we're just in divide, like twins divide here. This is younger kids on the line. It's tight end. He might be making a call where he's going to block number one. Okay, um, anybody that played us, has played us in the past knows that we, we run counter pretty well. We run counter tray. Probably one of my favorite plays, I think. Uh, we went in at one point, Coach Bruso was crazy with numbers, said we were averaging like 18 yards of play on it. So we decided to try and run triple off of it. Our counter tray is just like any counter tray, I mean, either a double wing team or what have you. I like setting a tight end over there because it usually brings a three if they're in a 40, or it sets a double team if they're in a 50 look, 
three, five, whatever you want to call it. All right. So if they're in a 40 look, which I have all up here, these guys are comboing to the backer, and the tight end's responsible for the first guy outside of him. Easiest release on the end, and we're kicking out. We're kicking the end, and we're leading through. I don't have it drawn up against the 50, but if they have like a five on the tackle, that's a bad deal. I don't ever want to put a tackle, I don't, how, don't care how good he is. I don't want to put him on a kid that's right in the middle of the hole and say, knock his ass off. You know, you're better than him. I want to put him with a tight end and say, the two of you get him right out of dodge. Okay, say goodbye to him. But nothing changes in terms of our reads. I'm still a pitch guy. I'm still a fullback. Here's our two reads. We're leaving alone. So they're running counter tray, and the fullback's getting it, who's our best runner, probably. And if he doesn't get it, then we're running triple out the back door. Ran the heck out of it at Orchard Park. We were pretty good at it because we ran, we ran counter tray well. Right? It's a showstopper. I think it's a, it's a, a super good play. Right, in terms of doing things, if, especially if you're spread out. Tight end, I, I get spoiled with tight ends. They are the man. I would say the fullback is the first man, the tight end is the second man, and the quarterback's the third man. I want a tight end that can split out and run a receiver route. I want a tight end that can double down. I want a tight end that can kick somebody's ass out on midline. So if you're going to play tight end for us, then you better be pretty good. And they've had pretty good success at going to college doing it. They don't catch a ton of passes, um, but they're pretty solid in terms of the body type that we're looking for. And to me, you can't replace them. So let's see. We're a couple of plays here. You know, I'm running short on time. How much time do I have, Coach? Yeah. Okay, this is this is Trey Triple here. We're reading these two. Our rule is if we have a three technique, the guard, the tackle is not pulling because you run into a mess with the fullback coming through and everything else. So here the guards are just pulling. And here you can see we uh, are like twins divide. We're going to counter trade to the right, and we're pulling it off the back side. That is not it. All right. I could spend the whole day talking about counter. Like I said, it's one of my favorite plays, but when you attach triple to it and stuff, it's pretty good stuff. So. If you guys have any questions, my email is pretty simple. It's Coach Jancy at Hotmail. I appreciate you taking the time. Hopefully you guys can get one or two things out of here. I can send you clinic notes if you email me, whatever you want. I have actual notes that are up there that I didn't use. I just have some okay? All right, thanks, fellas.